Hi everyone, I'm Nadia Bolkin, and I'm recording this in lockdown in Washington, D.C. Um, like everybody else in the series, I am a writer. Um, what I've published to date is mostly short stories in the horror genre, um, but I'm very much not a genre purist. As you'll see, the book I'm working on right now is actually nonfiction, and it's about like mental health and grief and loss and tennis. So there you go. Uh, this is my short story collection, She Said Destroy. Um, it's got a lot of ghosts, a lot of politics. Um, half of the stories are set in, like, post-colonial tropical dictatorship, um, and the other half are set in small-town repressive America. So that, you may be thinking, that's a pretty weird combination, but that would be because when I was a kid, I lived in Jakarta, Indonesia, with my parents. And then I moved to Lincoln, Nebraska. So it pretty much sums up my first three decades of life, I guess you would say. Um, thinking about how I got into horror, that was definitely down to growing up in Indonesia, where horror is like kind of the national language. Um, for instance, when I was in fifth grade, I think it was, we were once offered like time to go outside and play soccer or... Um, sit inside in the dark and listen to your teacher tell a ghost story and we all wanted the ghost story so that tells you something um, I was like the kid that would um, sit there at the dinner table reading ghost stories um, like really rudely um, I was just like really into it and they scared me so much um, but I just couldn't get enough I just got hooked um, hooked on the fear honestly and um, when I got older and I was starting to try to write like serious fiction I found that I couldn't keep ghosts out of my stories so eventually I just decided to say to hell with it and to actually just go full in and like write horror so that's kind of how I got to be where I am now um, because I said I'm not a genre purist and I'm currently working on nonfiction, I wanted to share with you three nonfiction books that, in my opinion, fall into the horror category, or at least can inform a horror reader. So first is a book that you've probably heard of, Devil in the White City by Eric Larson, which is about the sort of lesser known American serial killer, H.H. Um, H. Holmes, who was active um, along the fringes of the 1893 World's Fair in Chicago. As you can see by my poster, I love World's Fairs. Um, they're kind of my thing. Um, and I think what I love about this book is that it has this amazing contrast between the pursuit of beauty and human grandeur and possibility on the one hand, um, and the darkness of the human heart on the other. And it's just really quite Quite striking and lovely. Um, second book, Hostage to the Devil by Malachi Martin, who is um, who was a exorcist for the Roman Catholic Church. Um, I guess we could argue about whether or not it is truly uh, nonfiction, but it reads as nonfiction. I take it as nonfiction for what it's worth, and I'm an atheist. Um, but yeah, I really like this book because it kind of transcends um, sort of your standard religious type horror. It's it's very much not like, you know, the Conjuring universe. <laughs> um, it's it's much more real than that, and much more of like sort of depicting like a like a deeper universal like philosophical struggle for the soul. And for instance, there's this one. The final story actually is about this guy who has a Buddhist friend who sees him after he gets possessed and immediately sees that there's something wrong with him. And I really love that the author sort of highlights that because it shows that this isn't really about a particular religion's definition of horror. It's more um, universal than that. And third, finally, Japan After Japan, which is a book I picked up in college. It's an academic book. Um, and so a little bit non-standard there, but if, like me, you love J-horror, um, it tells you so much about how Japan got to be this place that birthed very unique, uniquely dark social movies, 
um, like Cairo and Suicide Club, um, movies that I really think, you know, couldn't have been made anywhere else. Um, so really interesting. I particularly recommend the essay Revenge and Recapitation in Recessionary Japan, which is literally about decapitation and that kind of thing. Um, so really interesting. Um, I've always sort of thought that Japan is like a few decades ahead of where the United States um, is at any given time in like post-war period. So I think that's why J-horror is like so good and so creepy to a lot of Americans because you can kind of see like a, a sort of glimmer of a future there and it's it's kind of a scary future. So anyway, um, that's all I got for you today. Stay safe and healthy. See you later.